back to News Junkies. I'm Bill DeFoy. Joining me right now is a good friend of ours, Jennifer Cooper Finitry. And Jennifer, good to have you back with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. You know, we have talked for so long about the facility that you're the executive director over, and you've recently had a name change. Let's talk a, a little bit about that first. Great. We have. So we have formerly been known as the Loving Heart Hospice Foundation, and we changed our name, and I'll explain why, to Access TLC Foundation. And we did that to align ourselves more with TLC Home Hospice, which is our parent company. Um, we're obviously the nonprofit. Um, and so we found that people were having trouble, a little bit of an identity crisis, people trying, having trouble matching us up. So we thought a name change uh, was in order. So it helps people really, what I'm hearing you say is to connect the dots. Exactly, exactly. Now, how long has the name change been in place? You know, it was um, unofficially effective November 1st. So we're still working on, you know, when you change the name of a foundation, that's a lot of, you know, T's to cross and I's to dot. So it is. Um, and uh, so we've been working on changing um, our business letterhead and our social media pages and all of that. Well, I know that we were able to assist you a little bit, or at least one of my associates today in helping to uh, take that name change on with one of the social media pages. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some great things. Yes, thank you. I'm so appreciative of that because you know, you uh, of anyone know how much work we do on social media. So uh, it's very important. It is very, very important. Now, we're out in Moore Park at a beautiful 10 room facility. Mm -hmm. And this is a lovely, lovely home. I had the 50 cent tour earlier and I had to pay Jennifer 50 cents. <laughs> but tell us about the house that we're in. So this is a 10, this is a custom home uh, that the owners, Mary Jo, uh, Lusty and Shelley Chilton purchased and converted into a 10 bed facility. So, um, you know, we've talked before about there being a real shortage of beds in the county, and this uh, facility is very unique. Um, and I think you would probably agree after being here because it really does feel like a home. It doesn't feel like a skilled nursing facility, which is typically, we call it the facility, um, and, um, but we use that term rather loosely um, because it really does feel like home here. Well, I noticed that in taking the tour earlier, one of the things that you normally would associate with a facility like this would be the antiseptic smell. Mm -hmm. And that aroma was not even present. And that to me was rather refreshing. Mm -hmm. I know the first time I came in here, when I came to the foundation, I did my tour here, I was like, oh my goodness, I wanna be here at the end of my life or I want my loved ones to be here. Um, it's 24 hour care um, and like I said we have a chef that's here meals prepared on site it really does feel like the comforts of home well I noticed that you have a large kitchen we're not able to go in there because of the, because of health concerns which is you know understandable but it's a big kitchen mm -hmm. it is it is and you know some of our patients um, as they near the end of life are still obviously able to eat and so we prepare that food and some of our patients are on more strict dietary restrictions, whatever it is, um, we're able to accommodate that here. And this is very inviting for family members to come and visit their loved ones. It sure is, you know, uh, we had a, a local Boy Scout who did an Eagle, Eagles project here and um, he kind of did some sprucing up in the backyard and there's a memory garden out there and a fountain and so, um, and sometimes our patients feel well enough that they want to be outside when it's a lovely day with their loved ones. And so we love that they're able to do that. So you provide that facility and I'm sure that their visitors, their family members and friends, when they come over uh, and go out to that backyard, they can really enjoy mm -hmm. that, that feeling of being at home, as I would call it. Yes, absolutely. And families are always welcome here. So. Uh, the rooms are private and semi-private, both depending upon what the families want. 
and um, but there's lots of uh, living space area here that they can enjoy together. It's very wide open and clean. Mm, very, very clean. I think that that's the one thing that I noticed, to be honest with you, the very first time I came in and I was like, well, this just smells like a beautiful home. It doesn't smell typically like, I think, what we notice when we go into a nursing home or a convalescent home. Yeah, it doesn't have that hospital smell. Not at all. And that, you know, like I said earlier, very, very refreshing. You have 10 beds, both private, semi-private, and you're in an unusual situation because you've got one or two beds open. Yes, and we usually don't. So um, we're usually full and often have a waiting list. And so um, we just try to take advantage of that. And that gives us the uh, unique opportunity to be able to offer that bed to other, other facilities that are looking to place their patients. Well, I noticed in one of the empty rooms, it's well stocked with medical supplies and things that patients would need under certain circumstances to make their stay much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. The nursing care here is just par none. It's phenomenal. So, and we have somebody on staff 24 seven here. And you wouldn't really detect this as being a, a nursing facility of such for, for hospice as you uh, would approach it from the street. It looks like a, a typical home. Mm -hmm. It does. We're located, as you know, from being here in a residential neighborhood. And, um, and I think that was the design when they purchased this many years ago, was to, to convert that into a home. There are so, there's a good number of nursing facilities, there's not as many homes. Um, so we feel really fortunate to have this. So when you're screening a patient or a particular patient to come through, are there things that you look for that would help to decide whether or not this would be a good fit for them? Well, uh, one of the wonderful services that the foundation is able to offer is we're able to help patients that are financially indigent who can't, who need end of life care um, in a facility like this and can't afford it because end of life care is enormously expensive. We've talked about that. And so um, that is really amazing to me that our foundation can just support a loved one being here till the end of their time. And, um, you know, we really look at, um, what the patient's diagnosis is, prognosis, um, what their special needs are, um, and then we see if they're a good fit for the facility. Oftentimes they are. And I will tell you, Bill, that um, we have a wide range of patients that, that come here. We had a patient um, within the last year who was very, very young, um, in his 20s and was here for a very short period of time and, um, and took his last breath here. So we feel really, and he was from Oxnard, so we feel really good that we're able to have this type of facility as a resource in the community. Well, it is good, and you know, we've talked about this before, but you, you were addressing the fact that a lot of people, well, maybe not a lot, but there are people that would have an issue paying for mm -hmm. services like that, mm -hmm. either they don't have the right kind of insurance or don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, if a family is really struggling financially, mm -hmm. you can assist with uh, the final expenses as well. Right, right, placing them here, yeah. I remember distinctly that young man, he signed himself in, which oftentimes a hospice patient isn't able to do that. He signed himself in the night before and then passed away the following morning. Wow. And um, so I, I, I just felt we were able to assist him financially, not only with being here, but we also assisted with burial. So it just feels good to be able to do something small, um, really, but helpful in the community. Now, you probably work very closely with the doctors that are involved in the patient's lives. Mm -hmm. Our nurses certainly do, yes, our healthcare team does. We have a weekly meeting, which we, um, it's called the interdisciplinary uh, department meeting, and all of the nurses and healthcare team come together and discuss each of the patients, and the medical directors are there. Um, and obviously the medical directors are overseeing the care of each of the patients. Wonderful. I tell you what, let's have you give out your uh, web address and phone number of people want to get more information about Access TLC. Mm -hmm. We have a new website, so it's accesstlcfoundation.org. And our local phone number is area code 805-222-4673. Wonderful. 
Jennifer Cooper Finnetry. It's always a pleasure. I'm, I'm really glad that we've had an opportunity to come out and have a chance to visit here at the facility. This is just absolutely breathtaking and a, a very homey situation. And you know, you walk in and you go, wow, this, this is nice. Thank you. We think so too. And we appreciate you coming out and helping us spread the word and communicate our little jewel here. And certainly if anyone in the audience would like a tour, we're always open to that. Wonderful. And it, you, you come out here and you really feel like it's family. Yeah. It's family. Yeah. Jennifer Cooper Penetry, we thank you for joining us. I'm Bill DeFoy. You've been watching News Junkies, a production of the Heritage Media Group.